Don't tell me you're gonna execute him with some toenails, bro. Don't give him some more respect than that, bro. Yeah, at least bite his head off or something. <laughs> Don't do our man's like this. Later in the void. What's going on, everyone? It's your boy Savvy, and welcome back to the Savvy Show. And in today's episode, we truly do have a special one because this is a Patreon exclusive request, alongside being the first ever SCP Illustrated reaction on the channel. Guys, I hope you're hyped for this because this is SCP 682 versus SCP 076, the warrior versus the dragon. And if you don't know these two SCPs, it's Abel and the indestructible creature. So I'm excited to see how this fight will go i'm obviously my money's on the indestructible creature scp682 but um we shall see how much of a fight abel will give the indestructible creature so with that being said if you guys are excited for this reaction please feel free to smash that like button also let me know what you guys thought about um scp illustrated style compared to the other content creators that i do react to on the channel i'll love to hear you guys' feedback since this is the first time i'm ever reacting to his content scp illustrated and also remember hit that bell so you stay plugged for each and every upload also hit me up on patreon if you would like to suggest patreon exclusive requests for me in the future and support the channel even more so with that all out the way without any further ado let's get this show started alrighty scp 682 versus scp 076 the warrior and the dragon able pace towards the towering monstrosity casually nonchalant in his motions swaggering and grinning as he did so a massive two-handed claymore was held in place over one of his shoulders the whirring gears and saws that covered its surface trundling away noisily Wow. I'm assuming he drew all this. SCP Illustrated drew all these designs. That's pretty cool. While the many small blades that made up its jagged edge slowly slid across the rim contently, purring like a cat. The beast in front of him was monolith in the sparse landscape, a monument of destruction. Hold up. The volume is super low. I have this maxed out. Why is the volume so low on his video? I'll just raise it during the editing. Oh my god. It's really low. The waves of hatred and anger radiating off of its frame palpable, rivaling even Abel's lust for bloodshed. Ooh. It simply stood there, a mass of heavily plated carapace and flesh, small black eyes and its mammoth skull-like holes into the void, resting malevolently above thick serrated thangs slick with drool. Even as he approached it, it was steadily changing. Its tissue warping, the plates and armors growing thicker, mounds of muscle and sinew and bone sliding over each other incessantly, all in a bid to reform into something that would better stand this coming assailant. Oh, wow. Truly, this was a godhead of annihilation, a being that embodied the primal destruction of existence. He could. So he was transformed into a certain state that could take on Abel. I never seen him do that with any other SCP. A being that embodied the primal destruction of existence. He could hardly contain his glee. After all this time, after the weight of centuries, he would actually meet a being that could surpass his capacity for violence. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> he walked until he was mere feet from its colossal form, and after a moment to savour this wondrous anticipation that he was feeling, he spoke up. I have heard tales of creatures like you. Glorious beasts of scale and flesh, talon and thang, a prowess in battle even greater than the immense intellect hiding behind those bestial eyes. They say your kind once ruled the earth from enormous stockpiles of treasure, killing and eating all who displeased you. But you were knocked from your throne, one by one, by the great warriors who walk this world no longer, until there were no more. And you became but mere myth, he whispered breathlessly. His kind? Is he inferring that SCP-682 is part of a species in itself? Because I thought he was just a single anomaly. What do you mean his kind? You mean like his brethren? Because I'm assuming he's a child of the Scarlet King, like his other kids that are not like SCP-682. They're all different in their own way. Is Abel referring to that? Even I had thought you to be nothing but fairy tales. But yet, here you stand before me. A living dragon. There was a rumble from the beast, and its mouth began to move, cracking open slowly as a statue came suddenly to life. Pathetic. It grumbled, 
its voice thick and heavy, like a mountain collapsing into itself a thousand times over. A dragon, you simple little pile of rot. You understand nothing, as I would expect of a well-trained lapdog. At this, Eowl's expression darkened, and the sound of the sword on his throat began to pick up. He looks huge. blaze twirled ever so faster. What? He said slowly, in a low voice that spoke of rage barely contained. That is what you are, is it not? A trained and broke mutt, bound with a collar and all, it murmured, gesturing Dang. slightly towards the thick metal choker around his shoulders and neck. Calling him a mutt? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. And it looks like he actually transformed into a dragon, because he's a lot bigger than what his original form is off on any given day. Hmm. I chose this, he replied stiffly, his face contorted into scowl. Whether you chose it or not, you are still a dog of those things, the only difference being that you eat from their hands rather than a bowl. It <laughs> sneered, the expression almost visible on his inhuman face. Dang, this boy's rude. Abel's face twitched, and he tightened his grip on the handle of his weapon, the revolving blades now turning at a considerable speed, protesting with a dull screech. At least I can choose my fate, he roared angrily, launching his sword with a downward swing at the beast's head like an almighty wrath of some obscene god. Okay. But the creature responded in a way Abel had never seen in all his millennia of fighting. It headbutted the weapon, the top of its skull and shell shattered into bulky fragments. Oh my its god. Its eyes bulging as the inside of its cranium was pulverized. One of its eyes burst with a wet pop and torrents the thick, viscous fluid gushed from its mouth, chunks of meat and tissue pouring forth like a fountain of blood and gore. I'm low-key surprised it did that much damage. Like, straight up. I figured it might wound him or whatever, but this guy is taking it. I'm sure he's going to heal up and everything, but god dang. But in headbutting the blade, Abel was thrown off balance by the force of it, recoiling from the attack automatically, leaving his stomach wide open. In that split second of defenselessness, his sight was filled with a gargantuan fist of the monster. Oh my god. A boulder sized bulk of bony plate ploughing into his entire torso, smashing into him with the force of a hurricane and knocking his sword off from his hands. He was flung over ten metres away like a rag doll, demolishing innumerable objects in his way. His body skidded heavily against the ground, shredding the cloth and skin from his back until he finally came to an abrupt stop half embedded in a large boulder. He hung there limply, streams of blood pouring from his eyes, nose, mouth and ears. Jeez. His face slack in a stunned expression of amazement. And then he laughed. He laughed long and hard, smiling and baring his pointed teeth in a bloody smirk that made it appear that he had just finished a gruesome meal. Is he part dragon too? Look at those jaws, bro. Look at those teeth, man. Holy shit. He spoke up in a language long dead, but the meaning of the words he said were unmistakable. He was issuing a challenge. But to his surprise, the lizard looked like it was having some kind of seizure. It was repeatedly sucking air in through its nostrils, puffing itself up even bigger than it was normally, oh. and consuming the viscous soaked blood dirt quickly, its huge claws scrabbling away at the ground and stuffing chunks of it into its toothy maw. Honestly, I'm pretty surprised that he was still able to punch Abel away after the damage he took. I know he could heal and everything, but it's not like he could heal that fast. Like, he still had all that damage. His eye was busted. His brain was, like, fucking splattered out. So, it's just surprised, like, he had the functions and the, the mindset to actually punch him away with accuracy. Um, interesting. And then something amazing happened. The wound which had warped the creature's skull into a shape reminiscent of an overripe tomato, began to undo itself. Uh -huh. The beast's head shifting back into its regular shape, the broken plates buckling and falling off to be consumed once more, and revealing a shiny wet carapace formed under the old, even thicker than the last. Fate! What would you understand of fate? Fate is life, and you... You and all of this is death. 
the creature bellowed, beginning to charge towards him. At this, Abel chuckled. <laughs> well, I can't argue with that. He replied gleefully. What is that now? An enormous mace out of the shadows of his ragged cloak. What? Its handle well over six feet in length. Its head nothing more than a mass of whirling spikes. Screaming obscenely as they spun in an intricate pattern of death. When did he ever have a mace? What? I do not remember him having a mace in his arsenal. I only remember the swords. The beast lumbered towards him quickly. Its mighty footsteps causing the earth to shake. Clods of dirt torn up in its wake, bearing down on him with the force and inevitability of an avalanche. Abel pulled back, standing sideways, moving his arms back behind him and grinding his feet into the ground. He turned towards the impending disaster, swinging his weapon idly with a seasoned flare. And then the beast was upon him, and he swung, time seeming to stop as his weapon once more collided with the creature's head. Dang. There was a deafening crunch as its head was crushed again, splattered into pieces, its spine impacting, the monster becoming visibly shorter as the unstoppable force propelling it met with the immovable force colliding with it. He's taking so much damage. The sheer amount of chaos generated by these two immense forces meeting launched the reptile several dozen meters away, spinning like an errant missile. Lumps of it flying off as it sailed through the air. Oh my god. It hit the earth with a boom. Bits and pieces of its frame dotting the landscape around the impact crater like raindrops during spring showers. Abel cracked his neck, ignoring the blood streaming down the thick gash in his leg or the free along his chest gained when his opponent slashed at him as he swung. Instead, he discarded the now bent and still mace behind him with an uncaring toss popped his shoulders back into place with a jerky, awkward shrug and started to reset his shattered elbow. The creature pushed itself up, eating everything around it, growing heavier, thicker and more rock-like in appearance. It shook off the excess blood from its form like a dog, droplets of thick, dark liquid splattering the earth around it and began to clump out of the crater. Dang. The crazy thing about it is no matter how strong Abel's weapon is or how much damage he does to the indestructible creature, he's just going to come back. You know, that's 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 the sad part about it. But um hmm. We we'll see how this story goes though. It lumbered over the lip of the fissure it created, only to be greeted by a large chakram shredding into its flesh, the ring digging in as the exterior saw blade spun and forced it even deeper into the wound. What? Several more followed suit flying from Abel's hands as he drew them out of the shadows, running towards his opponent. He threw himself into the air, no, unleashing axe? a monstrous axe from the folds of his cloak what and hammering heck? down onto his opponent like a bomb. It shrugged off the attack as a horse does a gnat, trying to swat Abel with his huge clawed hands. He dodged and weaved around its sailing fists, planting drill-like daggers into its thick hide, leaving them to rip and tear into its flesh. Whenever an attack would come close to landing on him, he would pull himself aside using an embedded knife close at hand. Wow. Still, the creature showed no sign of slowing its attacks, yeah. or even that it had felt any pain at all. At least he's putting it in work. minded in its assault, with only one objective in its sight. Kill. Suddenly, a stray claw caught Abel across the shoulder, causing him to stumble. He was rewarded for this again with another crushing fist to the gut. Damn. He him solidly to the ground. The beast lifted its other claw to deal the finishing blow. An executioner's axe raised for its unsightly purpose. Don't tell me you're going to execute him with some toenails, bro. Don't give him some more respect than that, bro. You at least bite his head off or something. <laughs> Don't do our mans like this. Then descending in a flash of light and shadow, it raised its hand again to crush whatever remained of Abel. But it was mildly surprised to find that his arm suddenly ended at the elbow, a river of molten blood flowing freely from the wound. The other arm quickly followed suit, snipped off at the joint by a gigantic mechanical pair of scissors held by Abel, the inner blade spinning feverishly, fresh gore spraying from their moving teeth. The monster attempted what? to consume the fallen limbs and replace what it had lost, only to meet the bladed boot of Abel, kicking it directly in the bottom of the jaw and knocking it onto its back. Okay, this is kind of awesome, but where is Abel getting all these weapons? Like, straight up. I know he gets those swords from like another d dimension, but about these other weapons, he's just pulling out of the woodworks. 
I'm, I'm so baffled, but I'm, I'm liking the heat. Abel fell onto the prone creature like a jackal onto its prey, Cut laying it into the creature with an animalistic ferocity, screaming Jeez. incoherently in his berserk of blood rage. He kept pounding on the beast with his weapons, pulling out a fresh one each time. Another <laughs> got too deeply lodged to pull out, or oh broken from the sheer strain. Boy going brazy. Eventually he pulled back, his breathing heavy, drenched completely in vile smelling crimson liquid. A bloody, hellish apparition. He watched it still struggle to breathe, its body still trying to reform itself. And that was when he saw it. A pulse emitted from the creature, a yep. shockwave that forced aside the very fabric of reality. He's back. The world warping around the beast as a shock of electricity quickly ran across its mutilated body. But whatever it was, he did not care. It expected no quarter, and he would give it none. It looked at him weakly, blatant disgust and hatred, still as strong, still as clear as it had always been. He pulled a last long sword out of his shredded cloak and intended to deliver the final blow. Okay. The beast bared its thangs and shot up as his sword descended. His blade buried itself in the roof of the creature's oh mouth, travelling straight through its brain and out the top of its head, the blade still spinning as they ripped through the pulsing grey matter. Honestly, in this story, you kind of see that SCP-682 is really not that deadly. Like, it's really, it's pretty much relying on its innate passive abilities to just regenerate and, like, adapt to anything. I mean, if he didn't have that, he would have been low-diffed, like, straight up. <laughs> it's kind of crazy to think, like, he's not doing anything extraordinary, to be honest, to Abel, at least in this story. Man. Still the monster lived. It's two feet more wrapped around Abel's arm. It eyed him smugly and gently, almost reverently, bit directly through his arm, ivory teeth effortlessly slicing through muscle and bone to meet together with a light click. Damn. Abel staggered back in surprise, and the creature roared back, headbutting him in the skull with a piercing crack, knocking him onto his ass. I'm surprised Abel's surprised still that he's able to just tank these, you know, injuries. Like, you've been giving him fatal injuries, and he's been just coming back and forth and healing up completely. So I'm surprised he was surprised. <laughs> it gave him a final cold look oh, no. and opened its mouth to consume him. Before its jaws closed around him, Abel grabbed the sword still embedded in its head, grasping the hilt from inside its mouth. As the beast's mouth closed around him, he forced it down with all of his strength, slicing the beast clean in two. We gotta give our man Abel props. Like, this is impressive. Bro, these feats, bro, like... <laughs> and this SCP is supposed to be adapt adapting to all these damages and everything. So he won't suffer, like, any, like, life-threatening stuff again. But it seems like Abel was just giving it to him. Out of nowhere. This it, it seems like a blitz. Like, he just did it, like, in no time. But its motions, one set in action, could not be stopped. The teeth cleaved his upper torso in two Dang. freeing his remaining arm and head to flop lifelessly on the ground with his final moments of consciousness Abel thought he could hear a strange whistling sound like something falling from a great height then only darkness time passed as a dreamless sleep and Abel awoke to find himself whole and anew back in his tomb Yeah, he moved jerkily forcing open the coffin that held him, pushing aside the chains hurriedly in a bid to get out of that bitter cold. It took him several minutes to unhook the stone door that blocked his escape, all the time pouring at the frosty ground of his boots, his breath crystallising in front of him. When he finally did emerge, he breathed a sigh of relief. He had never liked the cold, being more of a man for heat and warmth. <laughs> Still, he reasoned to himself, that was most likely the best fight he had had in ages. There should be a feast to celebrate with all of his team. Now, where had they put that strange pizza box? Oh, God. Is that it? Yep, that is it. Okay, so, um, honestly, there was going to be no winner because no one was actually going to die. But if I had to give, you know... If, if there was like scorecards, mind you, if this was like boxing or something, there was like scorecards. I'm giving it to Abel 
Because, I mean, like, think about this. Abel only died once within this whole interaction. Like, only died once. Yes, he had injuries, but he only died once. SCP-682, he would have died multiple times. The first time was the first shot that Abel did on him, when he, like, like splattered his brain, and, like, his eye socket got exploded. Like, I mean, if he didn't have those regenerative abilities, he would have just died. Like, Abel died at the end. And then again, when he got, like, like cut in half. He was killing him over and over again. So, I mean, I will give it to um, Abel, to be honest, because SCP, <laughs> the Instructable Creature, really didn't do anything. Straight up, he was just relying on his innate passive abilities. Yeah, and he was just countering, too. So, um, <laughs> this was cool, though. It was cool because we got to see it in a different light. It really showed me um, a different look, a different side to SCP-682. Even though this story is not, like, canon or anything, and nothing's really canon in the SCP universe, it's still something that was cool to um, dive deep in. If you guys enjoyed this reaction, please remember to smash that like button. Also, let me know what you thought about it in the comments section below. And also, hit that bell so you can stay plugged for each and every upload. And unfortunately, that concludes today's episode. However... I'll catch you guys on the next one.